Hello, my name is Joel Franisich, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to run Python in a web browser. Now, what you see here on the screen is a blog post that I wrote. This is a blog post where I reintroduce myself uh, to the developer advocate team at Okta. I go over a little bit about myself, my personal mission statement. But uh, in this video, I'm going to be covering this section here, the part that's uh, about running Python in a web browser. Now, in this part, I have a, a Python environment that's just uh, running here on this web page. I can type code in here, and it just gets executed right away. And uh, for this game I built, I give you a sequence of integers, uh, a sequence from the online encyclopedia of integer sequences. And then you need to write some code here that, given three um, items, three se sequential numbers from that sequence, you need to return what the fourth would be. So in this case, I'm getting all zeros. So I can just say return zero. It'll be all zeros. But now I have a new one. It looks like I just have a bunch of sequences where the, the number is just a one plus the one before. So let's write some code here to do that. So first I'll check for the first sequence. And then if that's the case, return, return zero. And then uh, the next one, it's incrementing by one. So let's add in support for that. mistake because I returned the wrong thing so uh, let me double check this oh there's another mistake I didn't do that CC I just fix it there's no save button as soon as it picks up that change in code it runs it looks like the next sequence here is incrementing by three so if I change this here to turn three it'll should uh, oh I need to return C plus three there we go and I can just keep going on and on, keep adding test cases here, but uh, that's not the point of this video. The point is to talk about running Python in the web browser. So what I'm going to do here is show you how I built this um, interactive uh, development environment right into a blog post. So to do that, I'm going to go over to a new tab. This tab here is called REPLIT. REPLIT is a programming environment that runs in any web browser. and uh, you can use it to write software in a bunch of different languages. I'm just going to do a normal CSS, uh, HTML, JavaScript uh, environment. And let's uh, name it and create it. So what this is going to do is give us some HTML to edit. And you will get to see the output of it over there. So let's do that. Let's add in a h1 tag. run. You can see that it updates itself. So now we know that this works. And uh, with that, we can start adding in um, some Python into this web browser here. So let's do that by going over back to this tab. I'm going to go over into my tools menu and select uh, view page source. And I know where everything is here. Um, if you didn't know where everything was, you'd have to kind of dig around, but I can kind of uh, just scroll to the areas where I know I have the stuff that I need. First thing I'm going to do is copy over this text area. I can put this in here. And this is where I've got some Python code. And uh, maybe instead of this, I will just say print hello world. So let's run this. And you see how there's some kind of weird indentation there. So because of that, I'm just going to Take that out there, hit run. And maybe I need to just hit reload. Or sometimes it gets hung up here. So if that happens, I just hit reload. And wait for it to load back up again. Hit run. And there you go. Now you can see I've got this little print statement there, but it's not running, it's not doing anything. So the next thing that we need to do is add some styling to this little text box here. So to do that, let's go up here and um, start pulling in the dependencies that we'll need for all the stuff to run. So I've got here a bunch of CSS and JavaScript tags to copy over. 
I'm going to put these in the head just like this. And then the other thing I'm going to do is copy over some of the JavaScript that, um, well, it's not JavaScript, some of the code that runs to make all this stuff work. So I don't need the full thing because we're not copying over the game. We're just copying over a little bit of JavaScript or sorry, Python. Close off that script tag. And then copy over just a little bit more Python. So we're going to have some more Python here that's going to instantiate that environment. And I'm going to paste this in here as well. And then the last thing that I need to do is actually have Python run. So even though everything's written in Python, I need a little bit of JavaScript to start everything up. And that little bit of JavaScript is this bit here. So I'm going to copy that and paste that in here. And let's say run. So here we go. I have this running. I've got a little um, Python text I can run here. You can see the output there. Let's say, hello, everybody. And there you go. You can see some debugging messages. Pyron called, hello, everybody. Maybe we don't want it to say that every time. So now we can go in here and comment that out and hit run again. And then let's change it to hello, everybody. And there we go. So now we have it running. So what did I just do? Let's walk through this here. So you can copy all this stuff yourself if you want um, and get it working. And uh, if that's the case, then um, you, you might want to go back and hit pause and uh, at the right places and go through this. But in this section, I'm going to talk to you about how I actually got all this stuff working. So let's go through here. So let's start again at this bit of code here. So maybe we can do here is we can just comment this out, hit run. You'll see there's nothing running. So you know that this is the text area. Now the text area is just a normal HTML tag, defines a little place that's um, editable. You can put stuff in there and people can edit it. But um, to make it look nice and fancy like we've got here, I needed to do some other stuff. And uh, to do that, I needed to do that um, with some, some code. So the next thing that we do here is we include this uh, JavaScript. So it's just a very simple, this is basically one line. I mean, we can actually even just make it one line here. Let's do that just to show you that that's the, that's the case. Uh, and if we hit run, it should just still go. And all that this is doing is saying when all of the content on the page is finished loading, execute this anonymous function. The, cop, the, um, the contents of that anonymous function is just this thing that instantiates Brython. And once Brython starts up, what it does is it goes through and looks for script tags. So you'll notice this script tag here says text JavaScript. Well, when Brython runs, it goes and looks for a script tag of the type text Python 3. And um, if you're paying attention, you notice we did that earlier. So here's our Python 3. And so now what's happening is that Brython will actually go and execute this. And if you write Python, you'll notice that uh, this is just a normal looking Python, except for this bit here. So this is saying from browser, which is just uh, some library that ships with Brython. Um, the browser um, library allows you to interact with various things inside of the, uh, the browser. So document lets you interact with the DOM. HTML lets you make some HTML tags. I forget what window does. Um, a window allows you to access the window object because you can um, see the highlights there. And then timer allows you to interact with the, with the JavaScript timer. So here what we do is we define a function called run py, another function called edit hook, and another one called init hook. And then what we do here is we say for the instance of CodeMirror, define an init hook, meaning when CodeMirror is initialized, run this code here, run the code in the init hook. And what this does is this says um, it sets up a type and delay timer, which I'll cover um, just in just a little bit. And then it says whenever something changes or is updated inside of CodeMirror, run this edit hook. 
Now, CodeMirror is the name of the JavaScript uh, library that makes all this stuff look nice, and it all, does all kinds of you know text editor goodness for you. Um, CodeMirror is actually used by um, major web browsers in their developer tools. So if you ever, ever open up the developer tools and edited code, you're probably using CodeMirror. So um, once we've defined this edit hook, um, we want to instantiate uh, CodeMirror. So the way we do that is we use this window object um, called CodeMirror from there, and then we say it's um, use a text area. And for this, we use this document thing here, and this is like a selector. This says select the element in the document with the ID of editor. So this bit here is what gets selected, and it turns that into a CodeMirror editor. And it does that by um, running this bit of code here, and then there's some config options here. So we can do stuff like we can turn line numbers on and off. So if I change this to false, hit run, you'll see there's no line numbers there, but with code, I like to have line numbers. And so let's do that. And then the next bit here is it says for mode, it's actually Python. So what this is doing is it, it's making it so that if I do something like this, or if I type out if a equals one, and when I hit enter, you'll notice it puts me where I should be for that next code block. And that's because it's in Python mode and Python knows what to do in Python mode with, uh, with text. The next bit here is um, match brackets. You can see that running here. So if I click there, it's matching these brackets together visually. Um, and this here says I'm using uh, four spaces for indents. I'm not like an old school Python program. We're only using two spaces, using four. And then you can set a theme. And the theme is just what makes um, this have the colors and uh, font you know, look and feel that it does. And so that's what gets the code mirror launched. Now, um, the last bit here is what actually executes this code. So let's just say, um, let's say we make this a little bit more interactive here. We'll say result equals one plus two plus three plus four. Then we'll here say, um, make an F string result is, And there you go. So you can see as I'm typing out, it's saying result, result is, result is blah, 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 result is 10. And that's the 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 uh, actual output that we want here. Now, how is that working? There's no save button. I don't have to hit run anymore or any of that. The way that this works is when this edit hook is run, it does a few things. So the first thing it does is it checks to see if this typing delay timer is set. Now, if you're familiar with JavaScript timers, this is basically just a JavaScript timer. And uh, it's saying, if one exists, clear it, because basically we've just edited um, some text. And what this is doing is um, basically it's called debouncing. So what this is doing is making sure that um, whatever I type within a certain window, it'll just fire one event instead of um, every time I make a change, uh, rerunning re this code. So I, I, I clear the timer, and then I set a new timer, and I do that by using set timeout. And um, what I'm saying here is whenever the timer expires, run this run py code and do it after 400 milliseconds. So the refresh from editor delay milliseconds, um, 400, that's just 400 milliseconds. And it says run py. And really what I should have done is made it look like this so that it's more Pythonic. Let's rerun this here. Come on run. Now you'll see here, sometimes it's kind of gets stuck. I found that all I need to do here is just say reload. And after a little bit of uh, waiting for it to finish, I hit this. I can go here and turn that there. I can see hello world. And um, so anyway, so I changed this thing to run py so it all looks nice and neat. And all that I'm doing here is doing this little bit of thing. This is the real magic here, this function called exec. So exec is the Python function that will execute Python. So you can um, evaluate Python from within Python. And what's the Python being evaluated? Well, in this case, it's the uh, contents or the value of the Python editor. And this here, py editor, you'll see is here. And again, um, I probably should have named it like this. Uh, uh, editor and just execute it and that's what makes all this stuff work 
So let's go here and uh, just validate again. Uh, result equals, let's just say, uh, string. And here I can do another f string and say, result is a string. And so there you go. Um, if you were to do this yourself, this is just standard Python. You can do anything you would do in Python. You can do it here. And um, if you want to learn more, you can learn more by searching for Brython um, or going to brython.info. And this here even has some other really cool examples. So like this clock here, it's all written in Python. Uh, there's all kinds of little demos and things that you can do. Um, they're all shown to you here. And so um, with that, I want to thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have fun um, using Python in the browser.